Hey YouTube, happy Friday the 13th from Sparky Marky Mark here. And I'm gonna do a little bit some, I mean, not too much collecting. I showed off on the previous video. I haven't shown you my autographs. I mean, I haven't been doing much on the updates yet, but on the, but also another thing, of course, had something to do with, oh, say, the coronavirus. So yeah, other activities I've been canceled, including the youth fair and, um, <laughs> Other things got canceled, so concerned citizens. And about yesterday, went to with me, Ma and Sis to get some supplies, including food, of course. And it is off the easy here and there. And now schools are getting canceled, including Miami Day colleges and other activities. And a little bit from a fellow YouTuber, Christian Chima, notifying me and saying that they moved. The Florida Supercon, which is the Miami in Miami Beach Convention Center, from May till July third to the fifth. If I'm correctly on that, so let me see the date correctly. If I was right, um, yeah, third to the fifth of July. So yeah, that's gonna be around the weekend. So yeah, I'm definitely going. If I mean. And another thing, pray to God to find that antidote. Please, I mean, come on, it's been too much. And but anyway, concerns to you all, get yourself hand sanitizers, get yourself everything you need. Of course, take care of you all and God bless you. So, show some Friday 13 collections. When you see in my last video, of course, I showed you the box set. Here it is, right in front of you. Ooh, it's a pretty big box. Okay, let me see the adjusting correctly. Is that the mundo? There we go. From Crystal Lake to Manhattan, Ultimate Edition DVD Collection. All right, this is this is 16 years old. I mean, really, I got this very good, nothing used, everything great. Parts one through eight, you got killer extras, and I'll show the individual discs. Very carefully. Parts one and two. Don't care. I dig it. It's fine. Too bad I didn't show a secondary image on this. There you go. Nothing special on the back. I am gonna get paper sleeves for these. All right, that was part one. Now parts, that was parts one through one and two. Here's three and four. Part four being the final chapter. Okay, there's something off that some viewers even piss out. But for, where's Friday 13 part three? It's not there, what the heck? What up, yo? Uh, at least it has some Spanish titles as well as, yeah, this one has Spanish titles and English titles. So anybody speaking Spanish would love to listen to this movie. And uh, what else? They would like to read the subtitles and sub subtitles. And of course, um, the person who wrote this did not put part three. The person who wrote this didn't even see any of the franchise. Seriously, yo. There you go, part three. And here's a disc with the two films. Some people were against it. I mean, I say it's cool. I dig it. I never, there's nothing to hate about this set. Next one. Five and six. Oh, yo. Now there's the, the, the hockey mask. And here's part six. Go over here. Here's part five, uh -huh. here it is. Whoa, let me see something there. Ooh, I do a little cover there, huh? Just, uh, huh. Anyway, here you go. And here's a tagline I remember reading on the back on the Bare Bones DVD edition and the deluxe edition. Um, and it says, he, oh, here it is. As a child, Tommy Jarvis did what many others died trying. He killed Jason Voorhees, the mass murderer who terrorized the residents of Crystal Lake, but now years later, Tommy is tormented the fear that Jason 
isn't really dead. So, uh, so Tommy and a friend go to the cemetery to dig Jason's grave. Unfortunately for Tommy, and a very unfortunately for his friend, instead of finding the rotting corpse, they discover a well-rested Jason who's come back from the dead for another bloody rampage. Another bloody rampage. Ooh, yeah. In Friday the 13th, part six, Jason lives. And take a look carefully. Let's see what's in here. Hmm. Well, from the, from the Bare Bones DVD edition, that's where it is. And that looked like war with the actual mask, but that's not. Here's the actual. And on the back of the Bare Bones DVD edition for part six, um, it, it looked like that Jason was on top of a burning warehouse. But when you saw the film, and when I saw the film, it was an RV. <laughs> I thought he must, I thought it was a warehouse. Really, I thought it was a warehouse from the back of the cover, but uh oh, it was not a warehouse, it was an RV. So, yeah. Then we have Fire 13 Part 7 and 8. Now this one said, like I said before to this one on the collection and the G-Shop review, that this was supposed to be Freddy vs. Jason, but Paramount didn't have the rights to that title, only had the rights for this one. New Line Cinema had the rights for the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. And that, okay, instead of it, call it a Carrie vs. Jason, because the girl um, has telekinesis so i don't get why is the part eight up there well part seven's down here come on but some people were very disappointed but all in all i dig it this was on the back of the bare bones dvd as well back of it and i gotta say it's not that bad and could this um could this chick um the one who fights jason tina I mean, could she be a descendant, or is this actually Wanda, Ma Wanda Maximoff's mother? I'm pretty sure. If anybody who are fans of both horror and MCU, MCU meaning horror, um, sorry, MCU meaning um, Marvel Cinematic Universe, you think that could this be Wanda Maximoff's birth mother if she was American and the other one, the father, could have been a different character i mean the father who knows but all in all it would be great and then we have fire 13 part 8 jason takes manhattan and of course of course um but before i get to that maybe in my opinion wanda maximoff versus jason so <laughs> i think that'd be great in my opinion so for part 8 jason takes manhattan that is a good look, though. I do dig it, as well as the makeup art, makeup effects for Jason in Part 7. I do like that look as well. This one, I dig it. I really do. It's pretty cool. All the makeup artists on Jason look great. And, uh, <clears throat> and for the record, um, they could have at least done it in New York if they had the money. I mean, the budget for this was $5 million dollars. Out of all the Fridays that have come before, Part 8 is known as the most expensive. Half of it was on the boat, a few minutes of it was in Times Square, which that they couldn't, which the director and writer, Rob Haddon, couldn't let it go because, and he did a lot of storyboards. Brooklyn Bridge, Madison Square Garden, the Museum of Natural Science History. Um, but that, of course, came down to budget and they couldn't do it. And he couldn't let go of the fight scene between Julie, the character of Julius, played by V.C. Dupree and Kane Hodder. And that's when, um, of course, they couldn't let that go, and then um, everything was great on that. So, and of course, you only have the Times Square in which fans who are big on these movies, they were wanting to meet Jason. So, yeah, it was great, it was fun. And some of it was shot on a back alley in Vancouver, Canada. And they didn't want to shoot in Vancouver to let it look like they were in New York. So, yeah. And also, they only went there for two days in New York. Huh. So, they get the best shots as possible. 
And let's see the disc. It's in the disc. Hmm. There, uh -huh. And then here's the part seven. There's the part eight. And now, last but not least, the Grand Fiesta, this box set. A little bit of uh, hot water. Friday 13, the Friday 13 Killer Extras. Everything you wanted to know but were afraid to ask is right here. You have the Friday 13 Chronicles, eight part feature read, each of them being maybe 12 minutes, 14 minutes, maybe 11 minutes, 10 minutes of every film that was done. Interviews with the cast, the crew from different of the franchise. Part one with Sean S. Cunningham and um, Sean, writer, director, with director, producer Sean S. Cunningham, and you have the, um, you have, um, Betsy Palmer and Ari Lehman, part two, Amy Steele, and actress Amy Steele, and Warrington Gillette. And also part three is just Larry Fine, who played the prankster character, Shelly. And then you have part four, only with Corey Feldman, who played Tommy Jarvis, but he does talk about Ted White a little bit. And also um, part five is only interviewed with Corey Feldman again. And part six, where director Tom McLaughlin and actor C.J. Graham. C.J. Graham played Jason in that one, of course. And, of course, part five, Corey Feldman talks about um, that he was off on Sundays because he was shooting go the Goonies at the time. So he on Sundays, he was shooting his scene. Only it's a dream sequence. If anybody has seen part five, go ahead and watch it. I'm going to tell you that much that I already am. And also for part six, with Tom McLaughlin and C.J. Graham talk about that the ideas for Another Friday and um, it, it gave him carte blanche and then do this and that. And then, of course, C.J. Graham talks about working as a bouncer and then the special effects people from part four who brought it with a hypnotist hypnotist brought in the special effects people that did the final chapter and then they look at CJ and they put the same wardrobe on that Ted wore and then voila they found their Jason and yeah right and then suddenly he gets a call from Frank Mancuso Jr. and then he's offered to play the part then you then of course part seven Part, Friday 13 part 7 you get interviews with makeup effects artist and director slash actor John Carl Beekler and actor stuntman actor Kane Hodder is interviewed as well as Laura Park Lincoln who plays Tina of course and it's very good effects they talk about that doing the ideas and now we met John Carl Beekler and then also talking about the the, where the location was and the thing of it is that they were shooting in winter time of course and then part eight with rock writer director rob haddon and kate stuntman actor kane hodder talking about the whole scenes about part eight of course thanks to frank mancuso saying do it in a city it'd be new york get him out of crystal lake take him to a city and then, of course, like I said, it came down for budgeting. And I was talking about that on right here. And um, so, yeah, unfortunately, we never got to that part. I mean, fortunately, that's what they did, and it is what it is. And then, of course, Secrets Galore, Behind the Gore, a three-part with um, John Carl Beekler. Uh. Tom Savini's interview as well, huh? and Adrian King. Huh. Forgot to mention those. Huh. But also the secrets galore, rare, never before seen footage, drawing, and still photography highlights, fashion, fantasizing the techniques and achieve the elaborate death scenes in the Friday 13th film. Special effects expert, including 
Tom Savini dubbed as the Godfather of Gore and John Carl Beekler exam and recreate Jason's horrific methods dispatching his various victims. Really, and he is with Kane Hodder telling how they how he and the others how he and his team designed the Jason look and everything that was done with it. Also, victims tell all some of Jason's vic come victims come back from the dead to discuss what 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 it's like to be stalked by knife wielding maniac and reveal details on the screen on on screen death scenes <coughs> sorry oh let me drink some h2o's hot h2o's in the house oh no i'm not gonna tell you much but here you could pause it carefully But another thing, of course, is this one. Tales from the Cutting Room Floor you have, and then which they have alternate scenes and including deleted scenes that were not in the films. You could say a bit interference from the MPAA, the motion, movie, the motion, pic, the MPAA, Motion Picture Associations of America. They battle, I mean, companies battle the, these people under a lot of projects. Always give them X ratings, of course. And also you have Friday artifacts and collectibles from action figures, guitar sign, um, and other things, including um, the tombstone that Tom McLaughlin used in the opening of part six, including the coffin that Jason was buried, and he still has it till this very day. And also a lot of things were used, including signed by the actors that play Jason. And of course, um, even at the time when this came out, I remember the the toy, one of the to twelve inch figures, the sideshow collectibles, which I've been anxious to get. I do only have one from part six; it's up there. And of course, it's very great to see these things. It brought me back to the time when I was in middle school, when I was addicted to the PS two at the time. Then you have scary trailers, visual effects by by these people. And here's the disc, how it looks. And to be clear, there's nothing in the back of the disc. Oh yeah, here we go. Unmasked part seven Jason with a big butcher knife. Hmm, I wonder if the others do have that. I mean, do have a different pick artwork in the back of the disc. Hmm, better get myself paper sleeves for those. Got to be careful with these. <laughs> no, I highly doubt there isn't. Oh, here it is. Huh, Maddie, I think her name is Maddie, going to get sickled by Jason. <laughs> with a scythe, with a handheld scythe, that is. <laughs> and then here we have another one, just to be Clear and be precaution, showing other things. Oh, <laughs> Elizabeth, played by um, um, Nancy McLaughlin, the, the writer director's wife, after her boyfriend Darren gets sp uh, speared by Jason and then, then comes after her. See the next one. Then you have Diane Kimmel's character. I forgot what was her name, but here she is. Gonna be facing death soon with the villain. least parts one and two let's see what's behind this disc ah you got the female heroine with the pitchfork with the half pitchfork 
in part two, uh, Jimmy, led by Amy Steele. Hmm. So I'm gonna have to show you one more thing before I um before I um how do you put um turn the video turn the video off of course. Okay. And I got this from a comic book store where a buddy of mine lives. It's a NECA figure that I found. It's for Friday the 13th Part 3! <laughs> now what the nice little music compose from the great Harry Manfredini. It was shout outs for Harry Manfredini. Here it is. A New Dimension in Terra. Right here, their team part three in 3D. This is a lenticular um, box, you see? Here it is. 29 bucks at a comic book store that they're selling. Some good stuff there. Just to be clear, let me see what the name of the store is, if I have the receipt, uh, I don't think I do have it. But I know it was at a comic book store near around Hialeah. Maybe in the next video I'll just tell you the name, or just leave it in the, if anybody knows where this comic book store in Hialeah is. And um, just to be clear, I'm not gonna like open the box or just take out the items and just give you the posing. <laughs> Maybe I'll just, I mean, I'll just leave that to another YouTuber name, the review spot. <laughs> Whoa, there's Jason standing. And here's Jason with standing here and another hockey mask with the wound. Let me see if this can pick up. There it is. The one on the right is with the one where the female hero and put axes Jason in the head. Then you have the knife that he's wounded right below there. You can tell where there's red. She stabs him there. And then there's the pitchfork that he uses to stab one of the bikers. And then there's the fire poker. And then there's the ranch. I believe he may use it to swing at others. The ranch. The ranch then there's a spear gun right here and then there's the the axe and the machete which i do dig the machete it's pretty cool very good detailed that these people are NECA so shout outs to the people and NECA for doing a great job and uh, the guy playing that if anybody knows about Friday 13 part 3 and 3d Um, he, that was played by Richard Brooker. And I'll leave you a link in the description box for the Hockey Mask Legacy. The Legacy of Friday 13. Um, that originally he wasn't going to be part of the series. I mean, in the end, he was just this apparition youngster that was portrayed by Ari Lehman. So, yeah. I mean, it is great and all. So, yeah, enjoy your Friday 13th. As of later this evening by midnight... Um, Indiegogo slash Womp Womp W O M P P Stomp Films Womp Stomp Films is going to be shutting down their rate fundraising for Never Hike in the Snow because principal photography has ended, and uh, of course you still have a time to get your hands on a copy. I'm oh, sorry for that. <laughs> For, get your hands on a copy of Never Hike in the Snow and a third edition of Never Hike Alone to those who never got a copy of the last two Never Hike Alone editions because like I said before and already in this video that um, 
uh, that um, the first one was only limited to 1,750 and the second one we had like about two, maybe three months. Then, then of course, I think it was a 30 day, who knows. Now this one had about three months or a few months ago, of course. So yeah, you better get your hands on a copy while you can. I mean, really, I think I got my hands on this one at a comic book store. Really, the lenticular is that good. Hmm. So yeah, I'm a big fan of NECA and a big fan of Friday the 13th. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm in the process of still watching a little bit of movies here and there. But heck, I mean, with this thing going on, I've been doing a little busy. And, and another coincidence that today is my dad's birthday, but somebody at the driver's license company mixed up his birth date and... Oh, well, in two months, it'll be his actual birthday, a month after my birthday. So, yeah. So, anyway, um, that's my that was my other part, because uh, uh, if anybody would call, I didn't have this. I didn't have this one when I did my collection in G-Shock review, of course. Oh, look at this one. <laughs> pretty cool, huh? <laughs> that's pretty badass right there. So anyway, shouts to NECA, shouts to Friday the 13th, shout outs to the people at Womp Stomp Films, Vincent DeSanti, of course. So yeah, better get your hands on a copy right now, yo, before it closes at midnight, all right? So yeah, and also, um, what else? Uh, just to be clear, of course, better get your hands on a copy. I'm not leaving the link in the description box. You bet the those who have Instagram, go to... Womp Stomp Films, that's W-O-M-P-S-T-O-M-P -O -O Films, Womp Stomp Films, to get your hands on a copy, man, before, and or get any perks you like, because they're going to be closed, because principal, principal Photography has now ended for Never Hike in the Snow, and we're getting a Friday 13th in the snow, so... Anyway, this is Sparking. Oh, before I before I sign off, just um, follow my follow my channel link. Follow my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Like my videos. Comment on them, and to be and also subscribe to my channel to follow for the link. I mean, not for the link, but click the bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of my latest uploads and videos. So, <laughs> um. So anyway, this is Sparky Marky Mark, and I'm out of here, and Friday, and happy Friday the 13th!